Uh, right, hello everybody. So welcome to uh, another video on this E46 BMW. So uh, the the uh, next job we tackled after the window was a problem with the lights on this car. So um, the problem sort of started initially where the, the, the indicators, when you switch them on, instead of flashing at a normal rate like you see there, they, they would flash like very, very quickly sometimes, and then sometimes they'd go back to normal. But then eventually they stopped working completely. And at that time when I got out to check uh, the lights, I found that um, the headlights and, and taillights were just staying on. You know, no matter what position this control unit, this switch here was in there, the headlights and taillights would stay on as long as the ignition was on. But then nothing, but nothing else would work. You know, like no, no, no main beams, no indicators, nothing else would work. So uh, that was the problem, and uh, and I'm going to talk about how we put it right. Okay, so it turns out that on these BM, I didn't know this before, but it turns out that on these BMWs, um, this this unit here is is not just the the switches um, you see here. This is actually called the light control unit. It's, it's actually got quite a bit of stuff behind it. I'll just show you here. The back of it basically looks like that. And that's called a lighting control module or light control module, LCM. And uh, basically this, this unit here, that LCM, controls all the lighting for the car. So even when you put the indicators on and stuff like that, so you know that the, the, indi the indicator stalk isn't directly connected to the indicators. So it all goes through here. So when when this goes wrong, well, you know, obviously it creates all sorts of problems with with, with the lighting. So obviously, uh, based on that, suspected that, and then uh, so the next job I did was sort of take it out, and uh, I'll show you later on how, about about how to get this trim out, hopefully without breaking it. Uh, so took the trim off, took that screw off, and then to kind of like this unit pulls out. Uh, actually, actually I, I took the, um, the glove box underneath here off as well, just to kind of like help me push it out a little bit because the um, the cabling was catching a little bit, but I, I don't think you would have had to do that. You could probably have just pulled that from here, but it was easy enough to take that out, just three screws, so I took it out. So uh, so basically, I, I took this out and then uh, I checked the, the powers and grounds and... Uh, if it might be useful to anybody uh, f for this car, I think it's the same for all models for this car. This is the uh, the powers and grounds. So you've got the uh, LCM pin numbers there. So you've got two lots of constant uh, battery power into it, two lots controlled by the ignition, and then the, the ground there. So, you know, I'll just hold that there. Obviously, if it's useful to you, you can just pause it or whatever. So uh, all those powers and grounds were good. Uh, so um, so that obviously based on that, I decided that you know more, you know 99% likely that that is the problem. So uh, the the main reason I'm actually making this video um, because so far so simple really. Um, but the main reason I'm making this video is uh, obviously when I, when I did the research, you know, like, like everybody that does these days, you know, I, I looked on for other videos on on YouTube and you looked at the forums and stuff. And the, the, the main thrust of what I read was that you, you can replace these things, but that they need to be programmed to the car. Now, obviously, like, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there, diagnostic guys who, you know, who can do all sorts of programming and, you know, pro reprogramming one of these to a car, I'm sure it is nothing uh, to them. But for me, it's, it's, you know, I'm not one of those guys to me, like, get reprogramming, the idea of reprogramming this quite a bit of hassle uh, and I'm guessing it probably will be the same for, for, for quite a few of you who probably may be chanced upon this video because you've got a problem with your lights and you know you, you've done a search and uh, and now you're watching this video now what, what I can tell you based on my experience is that if you if you get if you order one with the same part number as, as the one that came off your car and that's important, by the way, because these units, they come in all sorts of different configurations. Like, even if they, some of them sort of like don't have this auto feature, or maybe they don't have the headlight leveling feature. But even if this panel at the front looks exactly the same as yours, the part number can still be different. I mean, and the reason for that is, is you get different part numbers depending on whether your car has xenon lights or normal lights or LED backlights or normal backlights probably some other differences too so there are a lot of different part numbers 
for these so bear that in mind but I, I managed to find one with the same part number as mine and uh, I've put it on and uh, I haven't reprogrammed everything anything and uh, you know it, it works as you can see that you can probably just see that the dashboard illumination coming on and off there uh, the the indicators obviously work and I have been outside the car and you know obviously checked everything from the outside as well and it all works now true enough um, you if you if you haven't reprogrammed it you when you put the second hand one you do get this dot appear you see by the s on miles you get that dot appear and what that dot is is they call that a tamper dot and the reason that appears is because the, the mileage for the car, as well as being stored on the instrument panel, and I think in some other locations, is also stored in this unit. And obviously, if you replace it and don't program it, there's a different mileage stored in there, probably different VIN number, etc. as well. And the, the car thinks that the mileage has been tampered with, and then that tamper dot comes up there. That, that's what I think that dot is called, a tamper dot. Now obviously that's not a great thing to have i mean i'd rather it wasn't there i suppose but i've got to be honest it doesn't bother me that much <laughs> and uh and i'm guessing uh if you're watching this video because you know you've got all sorts of issues with your car and you just want to fix it as cheaply and as easily as possible it's probably not going to bother you either i'm, I'm guessing so you know no offense to like you know the the, the other videos on on youtube or all the stuff on in the forums you know yeah it's, it's, it's all good stuff but um I, i'm just saying that based on my experience if you if you if you got this issue and you're just trying to get your car fixed and sorted as quickly and cheaply as you can uh and you're thinking oh no am i gonna have to reprogram this uh, uh, and stuff like that based on my experience uh i would say no as as long as you get one with the with the correct part number and as long as you don't mind that little dot appearing there by the miles uh by, by the s of the miles then no you can just put the new part in and it works fine all right guys so i'll just finish by showing you what the back of this uh, trim panel uh, is like so um it, it's got these like two uh metal uh you know metal prongs whatever you want to call them uh that go into you know the fasteners you know either side of that that uh light control unit and these are sort of in there like really 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 stiffly so what what i'm gonna sort of like suggest is like if, if you're using like say like a trim removal tool and you're just trying to use it at the edge of the panel chances are you're gonna end up kind of breaking it because uh you know these are in there really stiff so what i did is i i managed so i just slowly just gently gently prise out a little bit and as soon as i had enough kind of like leeway i got i managed to get the trim removal tool like all the way up to the up to there pretty much and then pulled it out from from just by the metal prongs obviously say the same on this side as well so uh you know j just uh just a little tip for you there because funnily enough I, I just said at the beginning of the video that i haven't had this problem before because i haven't really had that messed around with that many of these e46s but a couple of the ones that uh, i have had or, or we have had i remember that these panels i've seen broken before and obviously i hadn't sort of really thought about my, why uh, much about why but I, i'm guessing that's why because that they are difficult to, to, to get off. So that's definitely a job that you want to kind of uh, take your time over uh, so that you hopefully don't break it. So anyway, uh, that's it, guys. I, I, I hope there's information there that's, uh, that's useful uh, and interesting uh, to you all and, uh, uh, or, you know, or some of you at least. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I will hopefully catch you all on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.